Good afternoon. Thanks for joining the session Techniques Behind Performance and Efficiency of Dell EMC Extreme IO. My name is Chandamay Mondal, Storage Solutions Director. For the ten, next 10 minutes or so, I will be your tour guide on the architectural details of Extreme IO. Now, Extreme IO is the market leading purpose built all flash array that is designed from ground up for the flash media. There are four pillars of the Extreme IO architecture. The first is the scale up and scale out, which helps deliver consistent performance with sub millisecond latency, inherently balancing all the load, all the data across the cluster all the time. The second part of this architecture is inline all the time data surfaces that makes the storage highly efficient coupled with the application integrated copy surfaces enabling self-surface workflows for different applications. And the fourth part is rich integrations with different applications ranging from enterprise applications like Oracle, SQL Server, etc., as well as VMware and other virtualized environments, some of which I'm going to highlight in this session. Now, the basics. Extremio is built on what we call X-Brick. That's two controllers and a DAE. You can start small with as small as 18 SSDs. Now, as your capacity needs grow, you can add more SSDs to it, and a single X-Brick can grow up to 138 terabyte raw capacity. Now, if you need to grow further, you can just literally drop another X-Brick to the cluster, linearly increasing both your performance and capacity, and it can go up to eight clusters, delivering up to 1.1 petabyte of raw storage, and when you factor in the general data reduction we see of uh, 5 is to 1, 6 is to 1, uh, it can go up to 5.5 petabyte of effective capacity. Now, what's the secret sauce? So for Extreme IO, okay, we do not store any data that's not unique across the entire cluster. And we do not store the data based on its logical address. What we do is we look at the incoming data block, apply a secure hash algorithm to determine its fingerprint, and see whether we have seen the data before, whether it's unique. So let me explain kind of like how it works. Data stream come in, we chunk it, we are looking at those data blocks generating the fingerprint, okay? Now I can represent these fingerprints in this hexadecimal numbers, okay? Now, I need to come up with an addressing scheme based on this that will be uniform. How can we do that? So, if I take the first hexadecimal digit, okay? How many possibilities? 16, right? Zero to F. So, let's see what we can do intelligently using that information. Suppose we have a two X brick cluster. So the two X bricks have each having two controllers, so total four controllers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that space of zero to F, 16, right? Divide it into four equal parts. So the controllers, each controller will be responsible for those fingerprints starting with one, four specific hexadecimal numbers. So for example, controller one, X-brick one, he is responsible for all the fingerprints that starts with zero, four, eight, and C. Now, these fingerprints are completely random. So the two data blocks, even if they differ by like one single bit, the fingerprint will be completely different. So let's see how it works. These are the data blocks. As they are coming in, we are looking at the first hexadecimal number and whether it's unique, right? And depending on whether it's unique, it's going to different controllers based on that first hexadecimal number. 
So it will be uniformly distributed as it goes along. And look at the last data block. It actually was there before. So for this one, we really do not need to store it. We just need to have another pointer for the same data block that already existed. So as you see from this process, the array is inherently designed to handle duplicate data in a much faster way. Deduplication is natural to the way we store the data based on the content and the intelligent fingerprinting algorithm. The other part of this is it is resulting into like balanced processing. So if you look at the controllers, how the CPU is uh, being utilized, you will see all the four CPUs in this case or the controllers are being utilized pretty much exactly in an uniform manner. And the other thing is how we handle metadata. What is metadata? Think of when you go to a library and you want to look up a book. First, in, you need to look up the catalog to find the location of the book, and then you need to walk to the rack to get the book. Storage controllers, I mean storage arrays, no matter like which vendor's array it is, work pretty much the same way. So when a data request come in, storage controllers need to have the metadata. Once it has the metadata, then it can fetch the data. Now, if your controller doesn't have enough memory to put all the metadata, sometimes the controllers need to go to the SSDs first to get the metadata, and then again to fetch the actual data. For Extreme IO, we keep all this metadata in memory all the time. And we are able to do this because as we scale, we are uniformly scaling all the resources, CPU, memory, storage, everything. So as we grow, we form a global shared memory pool that is connected by a very high speed InfiniBand network, given, giving all the controllers a true N-way uh, active active architecture where any controller can access any block at the same uh, microsecond latency, okay? Here is an example, VAAI XCOPY. What is it? This is essentially hypervisor telling the underlying array, hey, here is a template VM, copy it 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times. Now, in a traditional architecture, the request will come in and then the controller in the storage array has to copy all the data bit by bit. So this is a time consuming and space inefficient process. Contrast this with how we do it. Since there is nothing unique about the copies, right? For us, it's only metadata operation. So for Extreme IO, VM cloning happens at the control plane at the memory speed without touching the data plane or the SSDs. So your applications have all the storage IOPS always available, no matter whether storage operations like VM cloning are going on or not. So this is like a crucial differentiator and crux of how Extreme IO does things differently. And because of our efficient metadata, the copies are also always in memory and they can provide read-write performance exactly like the production volume and uh, production volume with all the data services on. So you can actually mix your production as well as non-production workloads on the same array. The copies will not consume any extra capacity unless something unique gets written to them. So it gives you the ability to consolidate your uh, test dev, analytics, backup, all those uh, copies on the same array itself while meeting your SLA. Now, we can take it one step further, what we call integrated copy data management. You saw the scale out consistent performance, extreme of virtual copies. On top of it, we provide application automation and orchestration, okay? So for example, you can actually do all of those things from vCenter itself, taking it one step further, uh, we have REST APIs, and uh, you can actually uh, orchestrate all of your uh, services right from, say for example, uh, VR Ops Orchestrator. We have vRealize uh, Orchestrator adapter, from where you can deploy the storage services, whether it's creating a volume, 
uh, setting up replication, uh, doing snapshots, all of this right from your orchestration layer without ever having to go down to the storage UI or the storage layer. So let me kind of like close it out, giving you a direct example of what it manifests in a real world ac uh, application. I'm taking VDI as an example. I mentioned that small unit, two controllers and 18 SSDs. That small unit can host 4,000 or more desktops. We ran, like with our new Xtremio X2 that I was talking about, this 4,000 knowledge worker workloads. This is login VSI chart. If you are doing VDI, you are pretty familiar with it. The industry standard showing how the uh, application response times at the user level shows up. And pretty much like, you probably cannot read it, the small uh, things, but basically it's saying, even with 4,000 knowledge worker desktops, the array has pretty much a lot of headroom for performance and capacity to grow. Another experiment where we booted up 2,000 desktops simultaneously, okay? And you can see it took us eight minutes to boot up all those 2,500 desktops. So that is like 0.2 second per desktop boot up time. Consider this like how your laptop works or like what your virtual desktop environment is. This is pretty powerful. And at the same time, when we ran the 4,000 desktops, the data reduction we saw was like 40 is to one. Mileage varies, but this is kind of like gives you a perspective of what we can do with Xtreme IO X2. So let me wrap it up with one customer example. My favorite, I'm from Boston. Boston Red Sox plays in Fenway Park and their uh, environment needed like an upgrade for their fans to have the latest digital experience for them to run the analytics and the baseball operations. When they moved to Xtreme IO, they were able to give this a uh, new digital experience at the same time getting seven is to one uh, data reduction with a lot of improvement in their uh, TCO and uh, total uh, and efficiency benefits. Thank you and I'll take questions off the stage.